Good morning, everybody. Um, welcome to Grand Rocks Product Knowledge Seminar on Granite Creek. This is the second of eight installments of our product knowledge seminar classes that we will be hosting. Uh, for your information, I do want to state that we have been recording this event for future reference and playback. Uh, for those who don't know me, my name is Ernie Buendrostro. I am a sales associate here at the Granite Rock at the Monterey branch. I will be your host and MC for today. Uh, my job today as the MC is to help us navigate this meeting and make sure we are in the right place at the right time. Uh, if you have any questions during the presentation, please add them to the chat section in Teams and we will answer as many as possible when we have time. Uh, to make the most of everyone's time and to stay on schedule, we may have to limit the numbers of questions that will be answered live. Uh, if there are any lingering questions, we will attempt to target those answers uh, to get you those answers to you along with a survey upon today's completion. Uh, for this seminar, we are asking everybody to keep themselves muted and your cameras off. The chat is now open, so we do encourage questions or comments throughout the meeting. Uh, firstly, I would like to thank all of you for attending today's uh, PK seminar on Granite Creek. Uh, today we have two guests. We have a senior account manager for Granite Creek, Dave Ventura, and founder and president Jeff Smith. At this time, I will uh, hand the floor over to Dave. Go ahead, Dave. Thank you, Ernie. Good morning, everyone. I hope everyone's doing well. Hopefully everybody can see my screen now. So Granite Creek is a paving material or a binding agent um, for decomposed granite, and we'll get into that a little more as we go along. But we are uh, we are calling our our product the future of paving. Um, as most of you know, um, with all the urban heat island effects uh, and issues that we're seeing, and uh, global warming and everything, um, our product we believe is perfect for uh, the future of being more environmentally friendly. So one of the things that we're, we're trying to help solve or some of the problems we are trying to solve with our product and, um, and what we're doing here is mainly um, we see a lot of stormwater runoff uh, that's happening with, you know, products like asphalt and concrete um, that don't allow the water uh, that's, you know, the rain and everything to percolate through uh, and go into our groundwater systems. Most of it's being run off, uh, so we're this are we're helping address those issues. Uh, the other thing is erosion control um, that we you know that we see more and more these days, and we're working to do that as well. And I'll go into more details of how we address that. Uh, the other thing is durability and longevity of um, most of the products. The reason a lot of people like to use um, asphalt and concrete is because they last a long time and uh, you know they don't have to keep a repeated um, work on it. Dust and weed control, rodent control, uh, most of your DG stabilizers out there um, do have dust, um, the weeds grow into them and rodents can dig through them. Uh, so we'll address that as well. So this first slide talks mostly about um, the permeable, I mean, our permanent solution for, um, for DGs. And as you know, most DGs, they go in great, they look good um, for a couple of years, uh, and then you've got to do maintenance on them again. Uh, one of the things that ours address this shows here, uh, project very early on in our, our history, where uh, at Asilomar Beach, we, Basically, um, you can see on the left-hand picture uh, what it looked like before. Uh, in 2005, uh, Jeff and his team made steps that um, went down to the beach. And as you can see in that middle one, that was taken shortly after the install. Uh, if you look over on the far right, we took these pictures uh, in December of last year. And uh, as you can see, 15 years later, this these steps are still holding up. And the big thing I want to point out on this is look at the transitions between the wood and the granite crete. 
Um, there's no trip hazards. There's no holes that are uh, dug in there. So it makes it dangerous. Uh, the other thing is, is that these, the bottom steps in the middle row, those actually on a high tide are underwater. So I can't think of uh, more extreme conditions that you would have than salt water and uh, tides beating on it. And like I said, till this day, it's still holding up fine. Uh, permeability. So our product meets C3 stormwater requirements. Uh, it also helps with urban flooding. Uh, and what I mean by that is um, with an inch an hour of permeability on our product, it's able to uh, be able to put water back in the groundwater. The nice thing about our product too is it also uh, helps with bioremediation of pollutants. Uh, if you notice on the right-hand side here, the pictures, uh, one of these is in Napa at the Culinary Arts Institute. Um, that picture was taken shortly after a rain. Uh, that was a, as you can see, it's two different colors. Uh, the dry spots, obviously, the sun hit it pretty high, but there's no puddling on it. Uh, the bottom picture, I uh, kind of laugh at this one as I go along because those are actually two places where the dogs went to the bathroom. Um, while I was there, uh, I wanted to catch the picture because as you notice, there's no puddling. The, the, the urine went away quite quickly on it and uh, it looks quite, you know, it's, so it's, it's holding up the city of San Francisco. Um, we now have four installs at Golden Gate Park that um, they are now pretty much standardized on our product to go through um, the entire um, park. This shows our permeability rate. Um, we've been tested in the labs at 0 0.008 inches per hour. Um, there's also a cross section here of what are, you know, what's required to install it and, and make it um, usable. So we do recommend a base rock underneath our product. Um, subgrade probably should be tested as well, uh, but usually it's anywhere from four to eight inches of, of class two base rock, uh, depending on the, the usage and what you're doing. Um, architects will design this with permeable base rock, especially in places where, you know, they need that drain off as quickly. So what we mean by a natural product, our product has no resins, polymers, um, oils, in it that can leach into the ground. Uh, it is US Green Builder. It's on the US Green Builder safe list to use. Uh, and all of our colors that we offer are earth tone colors. So they're friendly. They don't have high reflectance um, that can cause uh, the urban heat island or SRI levels is what we referred to. And we have a slide on that that shows that as well. So addressing the urban heat island effect, as we all know, uh, in the cities with more and more um, paving materials, hardscape, uh, and you can the list can go on and on as far as that. Um, it's, it's rising the earth's crust in heat. Um, Granite Crete's product addresses that. Um, as you can see the numbers at the very bottom, uh, we have an SRI level of 48 on our natural gold color. Um, which is, as far as we know, is the highest in the industry. As you can see, gray is 35, asphalt's actually a zero. Um, so it's, it's helping with the urban high heat, heat island effect on this. Granite Creed is also ADA compliant. Uh, and it meets, and how it does that is by the um, the, the basically the, the, the surface and um, the friction rate. Uh, we can be installed at a 25 degree incline and um, we can also be painted on. So any um, paint that's used on asphalt or concrete will work fine.
So our product is safe for fire lanes. Um, in most counties, we haven't had an issue. There are some counties that have always asking questions, um, but this shows a good example of how our product works. This was a, uh, an incident at our UCSC install in Santa Cruz where a shipwreck uh, happened on the, on the beach and they had to remove it. So the only way they could get the crane there was to actually drive on the product. Uh, UCSC called us up and basically uh, asked us what they thought. We, we felt it could hold it. Um, they went out there. Uh, that crane weighs 95,000 pounds, so it's heavier than any fire truck that, uh, that's built today, and it held up fine. We sustained no cracks or breaks in the product during this uh, endeavor that they did out here. We also recently did a study um, at the city of Los Angeles. They are going to be installing it in an environmentally uh, friendly area. It's, a, it's a, a park system there between Santa Monica and LA. And they were told they couldn't put asphalt or concrete on the road there. Um, so they did some tests. They compared us to all of the other stabilizers on the market today. And then they also um, compared us against asphalt. And once the testing was done, the results came back that we were the number one uh, product that had the numbers that they met. And we actually had better numbers than asphalt um, for hardness and availability. So our, so Granite Creek, has 13 points on the lead schedule. For any of you that um, don't know what the lead is, it's, uh, it's leadership in engineering, environmental design. Um, more and more buildings we're seeing this these days are working to meet those numbers. Um, this was an install that we did in at Land's End in San Francisco. It was a platinum install. Uh, and we helped make that make, you know, become a platinum install with those in. Hey David, if I can jump in a minute, um, are you guys are you guys actually USGBC members? Yes, we are. Thanks. You bet. Um, I like to show this one. This actually, this install was at Lands End uh, that I just talked about. And if you look at it, um, the architect wanted to have some stepping pads in there, everything, but which was all fine. But I want. This picture was taken about seven years after the install and look at the transitions between the concrete and the granite crete. You notice that there's no holes or any place where people can trip or anything. Uh, it's been holding up fine. It's still there. Uh, now it's been almost, well, 12 years it's been there now. This is one we really we we want to hang our hats on. We feel this is probably our proudest install. Uh, it was an install at the Marin Headlands. It's a Marin Headlands project, and basically, um, it's the Golden Gate Overlook on the road that goes just north of the Golden Gate Bridge that heads along the ocean. And it was a viewpoint um, while we were doing the install at the Toll Bridge Plaza. Um, Jeff was um, approached about this install and when it, we went and took a look at it um, and they asked us what we could do here. The main thing that they were trying to do in the beginning was actually um, match the color. And if you look behind, um, you can see the color of the mountain and in the forefront pictures was the granite crate and how it matches the color of the wall. Um, but the biggest thing that we like to brag about this project was, um, as we call it, sustainability in action, was the fact that um, Jeff came up with the idea, instead of hauling out all of the material from the mountain that they had to remove, um, he came up with the idea that we could actually crush it to our specifications and reuse it in um in the material below. So instead of using DG on this one, we actually used the uh, the mountainside and uh, 
what that mound's made of actually comes out is called cherts. Um, and we were actually able to get those ground down to our specifications. Uh, and so in calculating it, uh, he saved moving about 588 tons of material back and forth. Uh, we calculated it at 72 truckloads uh, to move that material out. And then what they would have had to have done was move uh, DG back in and that saved on that. Um, so it saved on diesel fuel emissions, highway wear and tear um, on the area. Uh, so we're pretty, we, we think this is where we need to move to, um, being, being easier for it to, to handle the areas. Dave, um, can you talk a little bit about um, uh, the testing time? If you're using native soil uh, or native material um, out at a job site, what's that testing time to get it certified and, and passed? So what we need to do is basically we'd have to look at look at the you know the material obviously first, and then we would um, you know bring in one of our technical experts to to take a look, they would in turn, we'd probably have to do some testing um, at a facility that would be able to grind it down uh, and, and then do tests, obviously geo tests to figure out if it meets our sieve analysis. Uh, so we have a pretty specific sieve analysis. Um, the reason that sieve analysis is so important is it that's what gives us our permeability. So the, our product, uh, you know, obviously binds everything together but that sieve of, you know, three eighths minus is what we call it, a DG. Um, so the bigger stones allow us, allow the product once it's bound to create voids in it. And the smaller stuff actually is what helps us bind everything together when mixed with our dry mix. So, you know, to, to answer your question, probably at least a couple of weeks before we would get those test results back um, from a lab. Good, thank you. Um, currently, this is the colors that we offer. Um, probably our biggest sellers in natural gold. Uh, the reason for that is, is the DG, most of the DG around this area is, is that color or close to it. So a lot of the architects that, that design us, if they've got places where they you know, they want it to look closer to the native soil that's there, or they're going to use us and DG, uh, just regular DG for certain applications. They want it to match. So that's the reason, you know, that's probably a harvest. Although Carmel Coast is becoming a very popular product of ours. We have a premium set that's coming out soon. Um, and we also do custom coloring. Uh, so if you've got a client that is looking for a particular color that doesn't match the ones we offer, um, please contact us or um, retailers like Granite Rock, and they will uh, they can contact us and we can work with them to come up with a color that that suits the customer. We showed this install, but we have several install. Um, basically processes. This is the one we call a dry mix method. Uh, it's for probably installs anywhere from 1,000 to 3,000, 4,000 square feet. Uh, Granite Rock is one of our partners on that that actually pre-mixes it at a few of their facilities and then delivers it dry. Uh, and then we have a process that we put it in. For real small jobs, uh, a, a cement mixer works really well to mix the product in. Uh, but on our larger jobs, uh, we are now recommending more than ever volumetric truck. Uh, there's more and more of them in the Bay Area that you can rent and use. The reason we really like the volumetric trucks for the large installs is the, the mixture content is exact. So uh, if most of you probably are familiar with the volumetric truck, but basically it's a, it's a cement batching unit um, because of our product, um, uses a dry mix, we're able to utilize the volumetric truck for our product. So you get the exact water content, you get the exact mixture ratios of our product to the DG. And um, most of these, the ones that we're using now can probably um, pump out anywhere from 80 to 100 yards uh, a day. So we can handle some pretty big installs in a short amount of time. 
Dave, what's the yeah. um, what's the tipping point uh, what, between the definition of a small job and a large job? So the way we categorize it right now is anything less than 500 square feet um, using a, a cement mixer is fine. Uh, but, you know, if you can get the, um, the retailer to uh, mix it, that works well, too. Uh, and then anything from 500 to uh, around 3,000 to 4,000 square feet. We do have a few installers that really like the dry mix method, so they'll probably go up to five or 6,000 feet. They have the install process down really well. Um, but generally, uh, penciling it out, looking at the numbers between um, labor and using a volumetric truck, it's right around 3,500 to 4,000 square feet is where that tipping point where you should look at a volumetric truck uh, to do the install. Thanks. And that's all on our specification guide on our website as well. So all of that is, is detailed and, and shows all that. So as far as edging goes, um, steel, wood, plastic, concrete, just about anything that will, that will hold the product in place will work. Um, we also have a lot of installs that do not use any uh, edging. Uh, in fact, one of them was actually performed by Granite Rock Construction. It's one of our biggest installs at UCSC. And what we do on those is uh, we recommend that the base rock go out about um, anywhere from four to six inches beyond the, um, the, the finish line of the, the pathway. And we compact it at a 45 degree angle, the, um, the granite creek. Uh, we do have a quality assurance program uh, that is working very well for us. Uh, we also have an approved uh, list of installers that's growing uh, all the time. Uh, basically, on the quality assurance program, we even have it in our spec documentation uh, that Granite Crete will go on site and train the installers uh, free of charge. So we offer up a, a one hour consultation. Uh, on the phone, we go through all of our install process uh, and our documentation. We send the documentation to the installers. And then the day of the install, uh, one of us will be at the install to train the crew. Uh, anybody that's worked with concrete or uh, asphalt can pick up on our product in a half a day. Um, they'll understand the little nuances that are different between us and those two products. And, uh, and become very well. And then for an approval list, we, uh, we also do that and we will monitor uh, up to 25,000 feet of the installs once we're satisfied that you have performed the installs to our satisfaction. We will put you on our website and put you as an approved uh, installer. We do put other ones on the install, but the, the approved ones, um, we give a little more uh, a little more highlight too on our website. So this is just some some installs and a little bit about our our product. Uh, you can see these are four of our colors here in here. Um, the upper right one, uh, we we are seeing more and more of this where people are putting stones in or um, even like slate stone and in, in those type of pavers. And instead of using mortar, they're actually using uh, our product to put it in between the stones. So basically what you're doing is you're, you're putting in the stones or the slate, getting that all in place where you want it, and then um, putting our product around it. Uh, the one thing that you have to be cautious of when you do these type of installs is the compaction. So uh, using a, a two by four or a piece of wood that fits in between um, the rocks is a really good way of doing it. If, if there's some places where you just can't get a, a piece of wood in, then just using your, your, the palm of your hand to compact it. Um, but compaction is a very important part of our product. So making sure you're getting good compaction in there so it lasts a long time is very important. Dave, if I can jump in for just a minute. Um, Absolutely. 
if if anybody out there has got questions, please enter them in the chat. Don't be don't be shy. Obviously, I'm jumping in here. Um, and then, do you have some additional tips on? Um, I'm I'm really intrigued by this stone inlay. Um, yeah. Do you have to put a resist on the stone face um, when you're doing this, or just go just go carefully around the stone? And any other in, install tips that you can give us for that? I really think that's a cool look. Um, yeah. Um, I'm going to let Jeff answer that. Um, can can he chime in real quick? Because yeah, he's Keith. the only person that we that can answer this the best. How you doing, Keith? Great, Jeff. Good to see you. Yeah, you too. Uh, yeah, what you would do? Those are relatively thick pieces of stone, pretty pretty healthy pieces of uh, stepping stones. So what you would do is you would mortar those to the base rock, <clears throat> and then uh, bring in your granitecrete. Uh, around the stone, compact it, and then you'd sponge it off just like you would uh, any kind of uh, tile or anything else. Keep it clean. Thanks. That's very cool. And so about what what depth do you think? Are those one and a are half they, or are they they're they're, thicker they're, than that? They're two to three inches. So they're pretty healthy. Uh, as you know, what is that stone? Quartzite or something that looks like a three quarters of an inch to an inch. That would be kind of the, you, the thicker the stone, the better. Yeah. I think I think that's good. That's a really cool look. Thanks, Jeff. Yeah, thanks. That's a Korean guest house in uh, up in uh, Monterey. So here's some more examples. These are actually some a uh, couple of them are fair. This was actually a greenhouse on the bottom right hand corner um, that we got installed in. The upper right one is actually a pond, and what they were trying to accomplish on this was, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> is that um, they had, you know, obviously the, the, you know, the nice looking stones and everything, but they wanted a, a small area. It was an Airbnb up in the um, uh, Jackson Hole area or Jackson, sorry, uh, area. And they wanted an area where the kids could play in the pond. Um, so the, the landscape contractor contacted us and, um, and asked us what we thought. And we figured there was no reason why it wouldn't work in there once it, as long as it was able to cure um, first before we actually put water in there. Uh, that thing's been about a year old now. In fact, I just checked with the installer um, uh, a few months ago and they said it's holding up great. Um, the owners love it. In fact, they're, if they're on the other side of that bridge there, they're going to be putting in another area because uh, they liked it so much. The, um, the upper left-hand corner install, there's another one that shows uh, stone. Um, this is actually uh, one of our kind of our abstract installers that that's a, it's a Indian ritual um, area that he designed there. Uh, the bottom left hand corner one is one that I wanted to show you because, you know, our product is permeable, but obviously um, you need to take into consideration uh, heavy rains and things like that. So what they did on this one, because of where it was at, they installed a storm drain. Um, if you notice there on the left hand corner of the picture, <clears throat> so they get a little quicker runoff um, on those heavy rains and everything. So one of the things that we are seeing uh, a lot more requests of these days is driveways. Uh, we are getting a lot of calls about it because uh, simply people don't want to, you know, because of the environmental concerns, People don't want to use uh, asphalt or concrete on a driveway. Um, so we uh, we went from zero probably as little as a couple of years ago, except for maybe, well, there was a few in Carmel. Now um, we're probably doing one, one a month, and it's the increase is becoming more and more all the time. Uh, the one on the upper left-hand corner was a large driveway in the Pebble Beach area. Uh, that is our natural gold area. The one in the upper right, that's actually one of our, our older installs um, that was done back, I think, in the uh, the mid, early 2000s, like 2005, 2006. Uh, and the bottom one is one we did recently uh, about a year ago in, in Santa Anselma, and that's our, our ash gray uh, color there. Hey, Dave, on that ash gray color uh, install, do you find that... Um a gray aggregate would work better, or do you still go with your uh, sort of DG color aggregate? 
So that's a great question. So we have done them with the ash gray. We've actually done both. Um, and we find the color really doesn't change. Uh, we've done, you know, we've done with the, with that, that particular driveway there was done with the, um, you know, the standard gold, California gold DG, you see, but we did have one in uh, Modesto that we did recently where they wanted, they wanted a little bit darker and it was, and it was obtained with using a dark, but the shade was just a little bit darker. We thought it would be darker than that and it wasn't. Thanks. And I, you know, it's just a shameless plug for Granite Rock uh, AR Wilson quarry material. So that's all I was doing there, Jay. Dave. No problem. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> uh, we are very popular at parks around the Bay Area um, <clears throat> with our design. I mean, these are just a few of them. Like I mentioned earlier, um, Golden Gate Park, uh, I think pretty much I talked to one of their maintenance uh, members the other day, and they have pretty much standardized on our product for pathways going forward. Uh, we have four installs there now. We have another one going in in June, uh, and I know a couple more slated uh, later on in this year and next year there. Uh, the one up in the left-hand corner, obviously, is our Toll Bridge Plaza. Uh, it's one of our early on installs that we had. Um, the bottom right-hand corner is an interesting one. That is actually a custom color. Um, it doesn't quite look like it, but uh, it was a combination of our natural gold and our ash gray. Uh, and what we learned on this project was that not all colors play together well. Uh, as you notice, the it's more of a marble effect. Uh, we called our inst we called our color folks and spoke with them about it, and they said that not all of them blend together. Sometimes they because of the the, the, um, the ingredients and the color, um, they kind of fight each other. And what ended up happening is it became a marble. The, the architect and the city actually really liked the the outlook of it, so we were happy with that. Uh, but it's something for us we learned there, and um, we will definitely do testing. Uh, before we, you know, on a bigger area before we do something like that again. Um, but as far as color matching, um, we know how to do that very well now. Um, that was just a special case one where they wanted to use two of our colors to do it instead of us coming up with a color. Uh, we have commercial installs all over the barrier. One of the things that we're that um, we're finding is uh, more and more beer gardens are liking our product in their uh, in their beer garden areas. The, the bottom right hand corner is a is a good example of that. It's a uh, it's a a brewery in Watsonville that that uh, they used it. Golden Gate Park again on the left hand so corner with uh, the Adobe uh, color, and then the Culinary Arts Institute. Uh, another beer garden, if uh, for you folks that work over at, uh, at Granite Rock over there, um, check out the Dust Bowl Brewery. The, the beer garden there uh, is our Carmel Coast color. Uh, that's a really nice install. Looks good in, in, that, in that sitting area. In fact, there's a just below where the seats are at, <clears throat> there's a nice fire pit there. And then our, and our natural gold here on the right hand side. <clears throat> now, we are used, <clears throat> excuse me, we are used in bocce ball courts. We have several bocce ball courts that actually use our product because of the permeability. It works really well um, as a base for the bocce court and then putting oyster shells over it. Obviously, um, any good bocce ball court has oyster shells on it. Uh, probably our mo uh, most popular installs are at wineries in the Napa and Sonoma, Healdsburg. We probably have, oh, I'm guessing probably close to 30 wineries now that have our product at it. Um, one thing I wanted to point out up on the left-hand corner one, um, if you notice in that pathway, those little black um, bulges, those are lights. <clears throat> so you can actually install lighting systems in our product, um, laying the wire underneath it, 
um, in you know any kind of a, a protective over the wiring. Uh, I know we've even had ones where they just threw the wire down and put our product on it. We don't recommend it, um, but it worked out fine. But um, the, the cylinders are in there. Uh, you compact it around the cylinders and it works great. The other ones are just some wineries in the, uh, in the uh, Healdsburg area, the Napa area, Sonoma. Uh, this was probably <clears throat> our biggest hurdle was schools. Um, one of the biggest things at schools, uh, the reason they don't use DG uh, in many areas is because of the tracking of the DG into the classrooms, into the gym, um, and kids are able to scuff it up and dig it up as well. Um, so uh, it took us a while. Like I said, this was a, a barrier that we, took us quite a while to get through, but now uh, we have I know of six installs that have happened in the last few months, and we have more architects using us in products. If you have a, ever get a chance, this is a Carmel Middle School. This actually is used for uh, fundraisers as well. So there's parking, uh, there's benches being installed, put on there, um, trucks drive on that, uh, and all kinds of stuff. The other ones, uh, we just had a recent install at the Berlin Game Intermediate School uh, that, uh, in fact, it's still going on, but that one went quite nicely. We have uh, San Jose schools now. We have one going in in Dublin next month. Uh, so schools are finally adopting our product because of the fact that uh, it is permanent. It doesn't have the tracking that standard DGs would have or stabilizers. And um, it also meets several other requirements that they're trying to meet. And then also the fire lane uh, requirements on most places. And how long ago were these two in Carmel? Um, let's see, Jeff, can you answer that? You're, it was before my time. Yeah, um, <clears throat> excuse me. The one at Carmel High was probably God, 20, 21, probably 2014, 2012. And the one at, uh, at the uh, middle school it was probably 2015, 2016, something like that, Keith. Yeah, they look good. Thanks. Yeah, that's a, that, what you're seeing in that one on the left. Those are which we spec as well. So that's there's uh, the installer saw cut it. So that's just those photo. That photo was taken just after he had saw cut it. Okay, good. Thanks. So in conclusion, you know, granite creates permanent. We like I said, we have and we. We definitely know it's over 10 years. We have installs in many areas, especially in the Carmel area when we first started, that are over 15 years old now and they're holding up well. Um, our permeability rate, again, is a little over an inch an hour. Um, uh, and then with that, to keep in mind that the DG will affect those numbers. So that's the biggest reason why we spec a 3 8 minus sieve. Um, you can use smaller sieves. Uh, but it will keep in mind affect the permeability. So uh, that's it. And then natural, uh, no polymers, no resins, no oils. Um, all the products we are environmentally friendly that we use. Uh, and just about any place you would put a hardscape product, you can put our product. Okay, open for questions. So again, anybody have questions, you're welcome to uh, put them in the chat here. Um, and uh, I've got a couple that I'd like to ask you guys. First and foremost, um, Jeff, are you trading out at all those wineries? So is your wine cellar all stocked? <laughs> it's not a bad idea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you could have had something from every, everywhere. Um, I I'll keep that in mind next time. I'll, actually, I'm going up uh, uh, next week on Wednesday, so I'll keep that in mind. Good. Uh, all the way back to the SIR, um, and this is maybe a little bit of a hot potato question. Do you guys know uh, what your SRI is versus white cement or white concrete? I, we don't, but I can get that number. Okay. Uh, and we do have a, a question here. Where would you not recommend its use for your product? Jeff, you want to answer that? Yeah, let me let me think about that one. Um, 
I would say just heavy traffic. Like, uh, like uh, you know, obviously, uh, we've talked to Caltrans, and we'd love to see them use it as a uh, uh, when you turn off the freeway and 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 you know those little turnouts there. But uh, the Caltrans con is considering it considering it underneath the uh, guardrails, that sort of thing. But I don't, I don't know, Keith. That's that's uh, probably just high traffic areas like freeways and highways. Yeah, freeways and highways. And I was gonna and um, I was going to ask um, if you had had. Uh, a, a highway shoulder backing job. Um, I know that um, when Granite Rock did the the paving down to Big Sur this past year, um, that they were asked to put uh, gold DG to make it more homogenous with the scenery. Mm -hmm. um, and I was wondering if if you had gotten a, a shoulder backing or or um, highway job. So. We haven't, although we virtually have visited all the Caltrans. Uh, offices throughout the whole state districts. Um, again, that would make an excellent Granite Creek would be great for that. However, we were not asked to do that. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know how Caltrans is. We yes, we need to revisit that to be honest with you. Yeah, right, one of the, uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Dave. Okay. Yeah, one of the the things that they're really looking at right now for us at Caltrans is uh, weed abatement. So all of these uh, the guardrails that are going up in between freeways and everything. Um, they're very interested in, in using us. But as, as we all know, um, the wheel moves a little slow at Caltrans. Yeah. Um, so it might be a few more years before you actually see us uh, in the ground at, uh, in a lot of these areas. Yeah. We've got some more, um, some more questions coming here. Who, who can we contact? if we would like to have Granite Crete installed? So on our website, we have all the retailers, Granite Crete. We we're more than happy to answer technical questions, um, but we will guide you to um, our retailers page to get price quotes um, and material. Okay. And Granite, Granite Rock is one of our, our biggest retailers, if not our biggest. Great. Thank you for that plug. Any any issues with car tires turning on it over time? Yeah, I'll take that, Dave. Um, for example, during the winter months, if if you come, are coming out of a a, a a garage and you need there's a three point uh, turn to get to, to make turn and and leave, that would wear the granite crate because of the dampness. And a three point if, if it's a circular driveway. Uh, straight in and out all day long, you can use granite creep. But if, if you have to crank the wheel and do a three point turn, it would wear the granite creep. Okay, very good. One of, oh. the, one of the things that we're, we've, we've been working with architects on um, in parking lots, because they're, they're really starting to want to use this in parking lots. And what, we're, what we've recommended is that in the middle, um, where a lot of the three-point turns would be taking place and everything. Uh, keep in mind that you know there's a lot more traffic on a parking lot, but um, is putting either concrete or uh, or something like that uh, that can take that on a daily basis. Um, and then all the stalls would be actually granite crete. Oh, then nice. Okay. Yeah. All right. Like, um, for like it just Frederick. jump in real quick. Gravel yeah. pave would work well. Gravel pave or pass pave. Grass pave. It's a good look with our product. Nice, good stuff. Uh, so Frederico asks, on big areas, is it okay to use a ride-on roller, or is it too much for compaction, or the water roller is enough? So yeah, no, we we actually uh, anywhere where you're going to have vehicular traffic, um, we actually do recommend a ride-on roller because the compactions. Uh, you're going to get a little more compaction out of it, obviously, uh, and but the weight of the roller is very important. We don't recommend anything larger than a 36-inch ride-on roller. They generally weigh anywhere from 1,500 to 1,800 pounds, um, and that's the heaviest we recommend on it. Excellent. Thank you. And then um, compar comparable cost. I don't know how we want to handle the cost question, but... Um, uh, do, you, do you guys want to give some general um, comparable cost guidelines? Um, I'm, yeah, we're <clears throat> generally what we're seeing in the industry. <clears throat> sorry, is um, 
And this is full excavation. Um, this is full turnkey, uh, anywhere from uh, 15 to about $20 a square foot is what we're seeing. Uh, that's labor, everything. Um, but for, for our product and DG, you're probably looking at less than uh, $5 a square foot for materials. Great. So again, folks out there, if you're listening uh, and you have questions, don't be shy. Put them in the in the chat or raise your hand or something. We'll call on you. Um, uh, what about if if you had a large area and you have a damaged spot? Say something happens to it. Can you? How, how could you? How could you correct uh, a damaged spot? Jeff, you want to take that? Sure. So that that would be. Uh, So what you would do is that you would saw cut that piece out. Uh, very easy to demo. There's no steel in it. So but what's important is that you need to have uh, decomposed granite from the same quarry for, from the same for the same delivery, because that's that's what it will take to match that uh, repair. And then we hit our uh, it's uh, 12 to 1, 12 shovelfuls of, of uh, DG to one shovelful of granite creed. And then you would you would uh, uh, patch it. However, as, as we all know, a patch is a patch, just like asphalt. Yeah. It's it's there's not too much you can do. You would wet both sides before you do you install the patch, and then you'd lightly broom it, and then that would be the best you could do. Yeah, I, I and I wanted to know what to do with those edges, so that's perfect. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, again, any questions out there? Thank you, gentlemen. This has been very informative. Any questions you guys want to? Um, uh, send our way please please do um michael Doucette, i know you're on here um i'm going to put you on the spot a little bit because you've sold a bunch of this for granite rock um do you want to unmute yourself and either say something about um uh, some of the jobs or what you've learned about granite creek <clears throat> good morning everybody yes um i was I was given the honor to work uh, hand in hand with uh, Granite Creek and we were able to work with some pretty big contractors where we did, uh, now we're doing schools in Burning Game. Uh, we're able, we did the Golden Gate Park for the dogs, dog park, and we're working on some jobs in for, uh, with, excuse me, with uh, McGuire and Hester for some offices in Milpitas. So we're able to not only provide Granite Creek to residentials, jobs, but also commercials. And it's, uh, and it's actually pretty nice to see that we are able to offer our contractors and our clients uh, different types of materials that can work well with what they're trying to accomplish especially with today's world that everything is going green. I'm working with another company out in the vineyards and I got Granite Creek involved and um, they're trying to replace all the all the walkways that they have and now they want to use uh, Granite Creeks because it is very earthy and it blends well with with the vineyards. So those are the new opportunities that have arisen. And like I said, I think uh, it's been going very well with us. The only, there's some little issues that we continue to have is the fact that it's, uh, especially here in Rebel City, it's pretty much made to order. So therefore, whatever quantity you want, it takes us about, you know, we would like to do it next day. And it's made to order because we need to avoid any type of uh, um, mist or water or any moisture that can activate the 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 polymers or the glue in the in the granite creek, and then pretty much we need to be we need to be careful that it that material is not going to work. So those are the only few issues that we have had, but we recommend, like I said, we recommend that we just kind of do. Uh, next day order, give us a couple of hours, we'll mix it for you, we'll deliver it for you, and then you can start the process. And um, tell everybody where, you, where you're where you working, Michael. 
So we are working here in Redwood City, California, and I'm able to offer uh, this material from Santa Rosa to Napa to up in uh, Manteca. So we, we're able to supply uh, Granite Creek material pretty much. If you need it, we can get it to you. Good, thank you. Um, I've got another question for you, boys. Um, uh, John asked, does the color fade with time? So, Jeff, you have the most history on that. I'm going to I'm going to let you answer that. I, I feel yeah. <clears throat> it doesn't. But Jeff, you have more experience. It, it it's not, it's not uh, it's it's unnoticeable, Keith. It's it it, it 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 hardly, I would say, if not, a, not at all. Yeah, those those early shots that were down on a Silimar um, look like they didn't fade very much at all. Right. Yeah, that's a good example. Is that a Silimar one? You know, that thing's now 16 years old and the color is still holding up well. Yeah, good. Thanks for that question, John. Um, Frederico's got another one. How much time is needed to cure? That's just, just like a regular concrete. Um, if, if you can, you, you know, you know when you're finished because you don't leave any marks with your shoes and a flat, flat sole shoe boot is the best way to go when installing it. Uh, you know, we say that in, in our literature that five days and then you can maybe put a, a light vehicle on it, but you can walk on it the same day. It's in if you're full cure in 28 days, just like concrete. Frederico, does that work for you? Yeah, so I, I know. So just to to follow up with that a little bit. So keep in mind, our product is is a semi-antaceous product. Uh, there are other proprietary binders in there. Um, again, none of them are polymers, resins, oils, or anything like that. But uh, the main binding agent is a semi is cement. Good. Well, again, um, very very impressive very informative and we sure do appreciate the relationship with granite rock and we appreciate you guys um, presenting today i don't see any more questions so uh dave uh jeff i will give you uh one more uh shot at just any closing comments and then ernie i'll toss it to you oh um we've got so would a long rain event cause failure of the surface no no, just be, you know, obviously in a heavy rain, you can't install it. Uh, we actually like overcast days, foggy days, uh, maybe even a little mist during installation. But no, long term rains, we've been on the ground long, you know, quite a while through through a lot of heavy rains and it holds up fine. Good. It's, yeah, it's, I would suspect it just gets stronger, right? Yeah, it's it, it it's just fine. Yeah. The first 48 hours is the is the most crucial time. You don't want to a heavy rain if if you have any you know thoughts that it might be heavy rain within those first 48 hours we recommend to hold off um, if the product doesn't have time to cure a little bit uh, it it doesn't it won't hold so uh, especially one of the things that we we recommend and it's in our spec document is that if you have sprinkler systems um, that are next to the product make sure you turn them off uh, before you do the install and then, you know, wait 48 hours before you turn them back on. Good, good tips. So again, closing comments, gentlemen, and then uh, we'll toss it to Ernie. Well, as far as president of the company, Keith, it's it's uh, great working with you guys. And, and again, Michael's done, done a great job for us and we appreciate you uh, being on board. Yeah, I'm, I'm, it, we, well, our partnership with you guys has been amazing over the last few years. Um, I do have to give a shout out to Michael. Uh, him and I have partnered really well and uh, been able to bring in some nice deals uh, along the way. Uh, and I, and I, I put that out to all the sales reps um, at Granite Rock that uh, in your areas, um, I am here to support you guys and help you win the deals. Um, and I and I love doing it. So don't hesitate to give me a call um, if you need me to come in and go to a job site uh, and talk to anybody or set up a, a conference call or anything. But uh, we are here uh, 
for support of Granite Rock and, and any other one of the retailers that we have. Okay, well, uh, thank you to everybody who joined in on today's uh, product knowledge class. Uh, we sure appreciate your participation and taking some time out of your day to be here with us. Uh, also, I just want to personally thank uh, Dave Ventura, Jeff Smith, Keith Severson, and Jackie Serrano. I couldn't do this without them. Uh, additionally, if you did attend today, uh, you will receive a survey link sent out to you. Uh, we do appreciate you taking some time and filling that out so we can improve on future uh, seminars here. So please join us next week. There was a slight change on that schedule. Uh, April 29th, uh, that is one week from today, uh, to learn about the HC Muddox Bricks with uh, Susan Best. This is uh, the same time, so 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. Uh, same Microsoft Teams application. Uh, this concludes today's product knowledge seminar on Granite Creek. Be safe, everybody, and rock on. Thank you, everybody.